Hey, what's up? Mirai here and welcome to part two of this IS Boxer video series. In this video, I'm going to be showing a few different methods for setting up DPS rotations. And honestly, there isn't much which is pro system only because any of these can be applied to any setup. And when I say DPS rotation, I really mean general rotation. So DPS rotation, healing rotation, or whatever other type of rotation you might want to set up. What I won't be showing is how to create the most optimal rotation because that depends on not only the game that you're playing, but the classes that you're playing, as well as your personal playstyle. So hopefully you watched the first video because what I showed in there pretty much sets the premise for how DPS rotations function, but I am going to go a bit more in depth and show how things are affected in game. For this video, I've kept the same hotkeys from the prior one, but have added a few more class key maps to help fill out some of my characters. And I've also added this action bar key map, which is something I'll talk about in a bit. Now, just a quick recap from the first video, combat hotkeys is the key map where you're going to be setting virtually all of your hotkeys that you expect to be using on a normal basis. These are keys that you'll be physically pressing on your keyboard. The class key maps are where you're assigning keys or macros to be sent to the game client in order for your characters to do something. And not only are these directly assigned to your character here, but also virtualized in this tab over here. All right, so looking at my character in game, let's say I only have these three abilities to use. They're bound to two, three, and shift three. It doesn't matter what they are or what they do, just know that they're part of my core rotation, okay? Okay. So back in IS Boxer, my DPS rotation hotkey is set to two because I find that to be an easy key for me to continuously spam over and over. My character in-game, Debonair, is set to use the Paladin Protection key map, as I had already set in the prior video. This means that I can move down to the DPS Rotation Mapped key in the Paladin Protection key map and start setting up some keystroke actions. And I've already got one set up here to send the 2 key. So if I move back over to the game and I hit my 2 key, the ability bound to 2 fires off. So I'm hitting 2 and it's sending 2. Very simple. And thanks to this fancy keyboard overlay that I created using Iceboxer's menu system, you can see which keys I'm actually pressing. Okay, now DPS rotations generally consist of more than one ability, so I'll add another keystroke action to send three as well. I'll just copy it, paste it, change the value, and export my settings. Now when I press my two key, both two and three are going to be sent at the same time. And when one ability is on cooldown, the other will fire off because that's what happens when you send a bunch of keys to the game client. Eventually one of them gets through. I'm not bypassing any global cooldowns or anything else built into the game. I'm just spamming a handful of keys. But I will say that you should limit the amount of keys that you send to the game client because sending too many keys at once usually ends up causing unwanted behavior like weird in-game lag, disconnects, or even crashes. Now, naturally, I am going to complete my DPS rotation and add Shift-3 to the mix as well. Same process as before, copy, paste, change the value, and export my settings. But now when I press 2 on my keyboard to go through my rotation, the ability on Shift-3 isn't actually firing off. So why is that? What did I just break? Well, the last action I added contained a modifier which kind of screwed everything up because when using keystroke actions, everything listed in the same step gets sent at the same time. So instead of sending two, three, and shift three as separate unique keystrokes, it's actually sending two, three, and shift three all at the exact same time, and the game sees it as two and three already being held down before shift three gets sent. And if you look at the keyboard, it's kind of difficult to press Shift-3 if you're already pressing 3, which is why the game doesn't interpret it as a working keystroke. However, some other games may actually interpret this correctly, or completely differently, but I would still suggest not using keystroke actions in this case. Now, there are three ways to fix this problem. One, create a multi-step mapped key. Two, replace those keystroke actions with do mapped key actions or three, stay away from modifiers altogether. The third option is pretty self-explanatory, so I'll talk about the other two instead. Creating multiple steps would most likely end up looking something like this, where I've got one keystroke action per step, which keeps any keystrokes from bleeding over into the others. 
On the other hand, using do mapped key actions would look something like this. This method requires that you create separate mapped keys for each keystroke that you'd like to send at any given time, which leads me to my action bar key map where I've created separate mapped keys to use as keystrokes. I showed earlier that the abilities on my action bar were bound to 2, 3, and Shift 3 for this demonstration. So I created three mapped keys, each with their own keystroke action, to reflect my in-game key bindings. And this keeps the keys from bleeding over into each other when called via a do mapped key action. I'd also like to point out that if you are going to be using this separate action bar key map setup, then you need to make sure that it's assigned to each of the characters who are going to be using it. Now, if we check this out in game, you can see that everything ends up being sent correctly when using do mapped key actions. And the same would hold true in a step based rotation as well. Okay, so this seems to be working out great, but let me show where it doesn't work out so great. If I move back over to Iceboxer and take a look at my mage, we can see that she's using the Arcane Mage key map. So I'll look at the DPS rotation in the Arcane Mage key map, and it's the same thing that I was using for the Paladin, repeatedly spamming 2, 3, and Shift 3 using do mapped key actions. Now if we add her to the mix and test this out in game, we can see that she's just casting the same spell over and over, regardless of the fact that I am sending three different keys. And that's not really ideal. So why is this happening? Well, the one spell she's casting doesn't have a cooldown, so it's always available. And because of that, it doesn't allow the other spells to fire off. But I will say that if I was to spam my DPS rotation hotkey for long enough, that we might actually see something else fire off. However, it's more likely that she's just going to keep casting the same spell at this point. See, on the Paladin, the abilities that he's using have a cooldown. Therefore, the other keys that I'm sending get a chance to be used. So, how do we fix this on the Mage? Well, either with a step-based rotation or with macros. I already gave an example of what a step-based mapped key looks like, so let's talk about macros, in-game macros to be specific. On this Mage, I've created a simple cast sequence DPS macro, and I'm going to drag it out to her action bar and drop it in the two spot and clear out the rest of her abilities so as not to confuse anyone as to what's going on here. Then I'll move back over to Icebox'er real quick to clean up her DPS rotation mapped key so that it only sends two and not the other keys. And let's test this out. So now when I hit two, she's only being sent two and the macro on her action bar is assigned to two. Therefore, the macro fires off as expected and the macro is written in such a way that she uses her spells a bit more efficiently. Now, most MMOs on the market have some sort of macro system, so this is a viable alternative to just spamming keys. Of course, if you happen to be playing a game without a macro system, then your only options are to either spam keys or use a step-based rotation. Now, World of Warcraft players do have an added benefit when using Iceboxer by taking advantage of the game helper section where you can create store, and manage your own macros. At the moment, the amount of games which Iceboxer's Game Helper can support is limited due to the fact that most games don't have as flexible an API as World of Warcraft does. And if other games are able to support this feature, then you can expect it to be added in the future. Now, I'm not going to show how to create a macro from scratch because there are separate tutorials which cover that material, but I am going to show how it integrates in with my DPS rotation. So if I look under my mage subset of macros, here is the same macro that I had in game. But what's really important here is that my mage macros are only assigned to my mage and not my entire character set. And this holds true for all of my class specific macro sets. They're all assigned to only the characters that can use them. There's no reason to assign paladin macros to a mage or shaman macros to a paladin because not only does that not make sense, but by keeping them separate, you can maximize the amount of key bindings that are available to use. So let me move back over to the Arcane Mage key map and adjust the DPS rotation mapped key one more time. I'm going to replace what's in there with a WoW macro action, and I'll choose to use the Arcane DPS rotation macro that I just showed. And of course, I'm going to be using a target of window current. So now I can show how this works in game, but I'm first going to clear her action bar to show that this macro is stored in the Iceboxer add-on and doesn't even need to be on your bar to work. And there you have it. 
I'm pressing the same hotkey as before, and she's using the macro that I created in IS Boxer. And if I enable key maps on both of my characters, you can see that they go through the rotations that I've set up as expected. The Paladin is just spamming keys, and the Mage is using her DPS macro. So what I've shown here is what you're primarily going to be using for DPS rotations. You'll either be sending keystrokes to the game client in order to use character abilities or in-game macros on an action bar, either in a step-based rotation or all at once, or you'll be utilizing Iceboxer's built-in game helper section to create, store, and use macros without the need to create and store them in-game. But feel free to mix and match either of these options. For example, you might go with a hybrid setup using a, a step-based rotation where in the first step you send a keystroke to the game client to use an in-game macro, and in the second step you send a keystroke that is bound directly to an ability that you couldn't fit in your macro or use for whatever reason, like if it was an ability that had a special proc, or maybe you're executing a completely different macro in the second step. I don't know. You know, this is where you're going to have to think about what you need your characters to do and how you want to approach it. There are so many different classes across the numerous MMOs that are out there that all require their own special setup. And DPS rotations can sometimes take a very long time to figure out and often require endless tweaking as your character's abilities, gear, stats, or whatever else continually change over the course of playing the game. Now, don't forget about the extra options under each step where you can configure a few different settings, but these, these can be very situational and you may not even use these at all. But I do suggest trying them out for yourself to see if it's something you're looking for. I'll also add that Iceboxer does not offer any keystroke autofire, looping, repeating, or automatic delays of any sort. It can't sense what your characters are doing, and it certainly can't automatically react to an event that's happening in-game. What this means is that your character's actions are a direct result of your input on the keyboard or mouse or other peripheral device, and when you stop pressing keys or buttons, Iceboxer stops sending keystrokes, and your characters stop doing things. But other than that, I'd say that's pretty much it for setting up rotations. In the next video, I will be covering a handful of miscellaneous information on how to further customize your setup, which I'm sure most people will find useful. And for any further questions, comments, or concerns, please visit the Iceboxer forum or the live chat.